Hey, have you ever felt like no one cares? Well, I have a story for you if you are dealing with depression, anxiety, or fear about my friend Steven that lives in Nigeria that will forever free you from anything that you are dealing with. So my friend Steven, he lives in Nigeria in Africa. And if you don't know about Nigeria, it's a bit of a war zone right now when it comes to food and fuel storages, um, Islamic regime killing Christians there, and also um, people dealing with the lack of water, electricity, and um, work overall. So I talked to my friend Steven, and I help when I can. And um, in short, when I talk to him, it's kind of heavy and it's kind of sad um, usually, right? But there's only one problem with this. Steven and I are both Christians. And so um, when we're talking, he has legitimate things that he could be sad about and depressed about, right? So there's no work, there's no fuel, no gasoline, no electricity, um, no food, like everything's coming and crashing down. Um, and what he said that was so distinctive that changed our conversation forever, he said, I don't believe that God is hearing my prayers, that I wish one day to come to the United States so that I will be blessed like you, that God will care about me the way that he cares about you because of how much poverty um, he has experienced. And so what messed me up about what he said and that shook me is the fact that um, the scriptures clearly say like, hey, um, godliness, it, contentment and godliness is great gain, but having things like the things that you accumulate in this life, they're no indication if God is with you or not. Right. And so I'm telling him, like, Stephen, um, God loves you. He hears your prayers. He cares about you. Um, you are blessed just because you are a Christian and you're a believer. Right. And so um, we've been talking um, a couple of years and he was just sad. Right. And so I just thought it was weird. <laughs> like, And uh, I'll tell you all, this is called discernment of spirits. And um, this is a gift of the Holy Spirit being like, yo, this is not normal for a Christian to be saying like, hey, I don't think God cares about me. Right. And so um, two books that really changed me and my perspective on things was um, written by Smith Wigglesworth. And number one, he wrote a book called Ever Increasing Faith. And then number two is in the description box below. I can't remember it. But um, he talked about the baptism of the Holy Spirit being the distinguishing factor in a believer's life, right? So he said he was evangelizing and he was talking to a woman and he was trying to get her to accept Jesus Christ as his, her, her Lord and Savior. And she says to him, do I have to stop drinking? And he said like, no. And then she said, do I have to stop smoking? And, <laughs> and he said, no. And he said he laid hands on her and she received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and she threw away her drugs. She threw away her alcohol. She threw away her cigarettes. So this mind frame has changed the way that I speak to people and changed the way I evangelize. The baptism of the Holy Spirit changes everything. Right. So I'm talking to Stephen and he said and I'm like, hey, have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And he told me like, hey, yes, I got baptized in the Catholic Church when I was a kid. I have been baptized, right? So we go to John 3, and I think that we're on the same page. But what I saw was a lot of people get baptized in water, but do not receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit as described in Acts 19, right? And so in Acts 19, you have a group of disciples. They are followers of Jesus, right? And Paul comes to them and says, like, hey, have you received the Holy Spirit? And they say to him, we didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. Wild. <laughs> These are believers. These are Christians, right? And Paul's like, hey, what baptism did y'all get baptized by if you did not receive the Holy Spirit yet? And they said, we got the baptism of John. 
which is the remission of sins, right? And he was like, um, yes, but you need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So Paul laid hands on them, um, prayed for them and said, receive ye the Holy Spirit. And then um, they got infilled with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of fire. And then they had the evidence of speaking in tongues. So when I asked um, Stephen to read Acts 19 and say like, hey, has this ever happened to you? He said, no this has not happened to me yet, right? And so he asked me, he's like, hey, what I'm supposed to do? I'm in Nigeria. I have no man to lay hands on me. How am I going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And so we went to Luke 11. In Luke 11, um, Jesus says, if your fathers who are evil know how to give good gifts to their children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So I told Stephen, I was like, hey, all you have to do is ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I instructed him. I said, hey, get on your knees, lift your hands to heaven and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, baptize me with your Holy Spirit. It wait. <laughs> and um, he was saying like, hey, how will I know that I've been baptized with the Holy Spirit? And I said, Stephen, you will know. <laughs> you will know when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So um, this is just a time frame. It doesn't take this long, but this is just a story. Uh, I looked at my phone and Steven hits me back up 30 minutes later. And he said, it happened. I got baptized by the Holy Spirit. And so this has, has to be the best part of my entire year. I've been to Israel. I've been to Kenya. I've been to Puerto Rico. This is literally the best part of my entire year when he said what happened in his room by himself. He said that uh, while he was on his knees, hands lifted, praying that a wind came up in his room. And he said, this heaviness came off of him and he felt light and that he just began to sing and praise God and pray. And he had so much joy come upon him and said, I told you, I said, I told you, you would know when you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And do you know the best part of this story? This was all via text. He received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I wasn't even on the phone. I wasn't even praying for him for real. Like I was praying on my side, but I didn't pray over the phone because I wanted to make a big distinction. I didn't want Stephen to feel like he needed me, a man, any conduit, any mediator, any go between to get his prayers answered. Right. And so. Now he has a testimony of how Jesus answered his prayers, how he got filled with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and also how all this depression, anxiety, and fear came off of him, right? And so this is what you have to know about what power Jesus has given to his followers and believers, right? So the scriptures say that he has given you power over diseases and demons, being unclean spirits. So Isaiah 61 says he has given you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, heaviness, right? So that's depression. And so um, there's only two kingdoms, the kingdom of light being God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the father and the kingdom of the darkness, the demon, <laughs> the devil, his angels and his demons, right? And so um, when you have depression or the spirit of fear, um, they are either in the category of a demon, right? Or a disease, if it's a chemical imbalance in the brain. But Jesus says he has given you power over unclean spirits. And so I'm just gonna let you know, um, you have to be a believer, right? The power of the Holy Spirit um, will free unbelievers, right? But Jesus came in the world to um, do two things, to free the world from sin and destroy the works of the devil, right? So, um, if you're depressed, you're fearful, or you're having anxiety because of sin, or it's just the work of the devil, either way, the blood of Jesus will free you and the name of Jesus. So all you have to do is repent and believe in Jesus. So Jesus came into the world, lived a holy and perfect life, being the son of the living God and God himself, and he died for your sins. He was perfect and he bore your sins unto himself. And so he was crucified on the cross, Christ crucified, and he died and he was buried. 
and on the third day he resurrected on the day on the on the third day from the he resurrected from the dead that you might be saved through him and that we might have eternal life and so Just put your faith in Jesus, in his finished work. This is Romans 10 and 9. If you confess your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, then you are saved and you will receive eternal life. And this is also John 3 and 16. Um, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And this is John 3 and 17. For he sent his son not into the world to condemn it, but that men might be saved through him, right? And so salvation is only by the way of Jesus Christ and believing on his finished work in the cross that he defeated hell, sin, death, and the grave, the devil and his angels on the cross and resurrecting from the dead. So I'm telling you right now, if you shall humble yourself and pray, just like the scriptures say, if you will if, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, seek my face, I will hear from heaven and heal their land. God will hear you and he will hear, <laughs> heal you, hear and heal you. Um, just pray. And I do want to say also about Billy Graham's testimony. If you don't know who Billy Graham is, he's one of the biggest evangelists worldwide but in american history billy graham said when he was in a church service and he went down to the altar to give his life to jesus he said the only thing that he felt was fear (laughs) he um, the fear of going down the fear of man so on and so forth but in the scriptures he says that if you shall deny me before men i will deny you before my father on the day of judgment but if you shall confess me before men I will confess you before my father so that you will have salvation on the day of judgment. This is Jesus speaking, right? So he said all he had that day was fear. But he said the next day when he woke up, he was a changed person. And so I want to say both um, testimonies of Stephen and Billy Graham because um, all you need to do is pray the prayer of faith. You just pray. Like, hey, Lord, (laughs) I'm praying that I will receive the Holy Spirit. And that's it. Um, Just pray the name of Jesus unto the Father that you will receive the baptism. And that's it. Um, Jesus finished work will do all the rest um, as the starting off point. (laughs) And so um, this will forever free you from fear, depression and anxiety. But also I'm saying what Jesus said. (laughs) repent and believe and go and sin no more. All right. So, um, y'all go ahead and send this video to anyone who is struggling with fear, depression, sin, or anxiety. And also like this video, it helps the video to get to people that need to see it. Right. And also make sure to comment, share, subscribe, and join our Bible study newsletter email list. Right. And so this is our prayer. Um, Click on screen for the next video.